Hello everyone, my name is Corey Campbell and I'm the Officer of Gallery Operations here at Japan Society. I'm going to be your host for this video walkthrough of our current exhibition, The Garden of Unearthly Delights, works by Ikeda, Tenyoya, and Team Lab. Even though all three artists are working in very different styles and very different media, one thing that links them all together is the fact that all of their artworks include vertigo-inducing level of details within their works. And because of this, we are actually hailing these three artists as modern day Takumi, or master craftsmen. Another thing linking these artists together is the fact that all three are looking to the past. They're looking to classic Japanese art for sources of inspiration. And they're taking these sources of inspiration and modernizing them and adding them into contemporary artworks, which they are creating literally as we speak. The first artist in the exhibition is Manabu Ikeda. Ikeda creates all of his artwork using the same materials. A very special type of pen called a Tachikawa comic nib pen and acrylic ink. The Tachikawa comic nib pen is famous in Japan because it's a favored tool of Japanese anime artists. And one reason why they like this specific pen is because the tip of the pen is only 0.1 millimeter wide. Add that very small pen tip in with the fact that the longest stroke that Ikeda takes with this special pen is shorter than a quarter of an inch. And the level of detail that he includes in his artwork. It's easy to understand why Manabu Ikeda spends sometimes up to years working on a single piece. The very first piece when you walk into the exhibition is this work, entitled Meltdown. Dated to 2013, Meltdown is the most recent pen and ink work by Ikeda in the exhibition. And this is a good work to use to talk about some typical examples of what you will see in Manabu Ikeda's art. Here in Meltdown, we see this very futuristic or sci-fi inspired cityscape balanced precariously with an element from the natural world. In Meltdown's case, this cityscape is balanced on this giant glacier as the glacier slides down this mountaintop. Now, for many people, they would consider this to be kind of a negative image. For Ikeda, he sees these as very positive images. In his mind, this is showing his hope for the future that humanity learns to live and work in harmony with our natural surroundings. The level of detail in Ikeda's works is absolutely staggering. And we really want to encourage our viewers to come and spend a significant amount of time not only with Ikeda's works, but with all the works in the exhibition. So, for everyone who comes to take one of our regularly scheduled docent tours, you will receive a complimentary Japan Society magnifying glass. So after the tour, you can come back and really get heavy duty close into these details and in appreciate the amount of work that Ikeda, Tenyoya, and Team Lab put in to all of their artistic endeavors. The second artist in the exhibition is the Artist Collective Team Lab. As of mid-October, Team Lab had between 350 and 400 members and adding more members every day. The members of Team Lab have specialties that range from fine art to graphic design to computer engineering to mathematics. Team Lab works exclusively in digital media, meaning that they create all of their artworks on computers and all of their artworks are run off of computers in some way, shape, or form. Team Lab is all about creating artworks that are participatory and performative, meaning that we as the viewers are able to participate in the creation of the artwork and that the artwork will actually respond in some way to our movement. Here I'm standing in a Room Skies installation that Team Lab created specifically for our Garden of Unearthly Delights exhibition. This site-specific installation is called Flowers and People, Gold and Dark. Behind me, there are two works being run on Sony 4K monitors, Ever Blossoming Life Dark 
an ever-blossoming life gold. The ever-blossoming works are unique because they are run with a special algorithm that ensures that every single time you see these two artworks, the image will be slightly different. Then on the walls and the floor around us is a brand new piece that Team Lab is making their world debut here at Japan Society for. This piece is motion sensor activated. The flowers on the walls and on the floor respond to our movements. So when you rub your hands over the walls and rub your hand over a flower, wait about 10, 15 seconds and the flower will start to wither and die. If you stand about three feet away from the wall and just stand there, then new flowers will grow and respond to our movements. The floor responds in the exact same way. So within this installation, Team Lab has created a space that is all about life, death, and rebirth. A constant renewal that responds visually and auditorily to us, the viewer. So every single time you come and see this work, it will be a brand new experience every single time. The final artist in the exhibition is Hisashi Tenyoya, and he is considered the bad boy of contemporary Japanese art. He smokes like a freight train, he constantly wears a black beanie, and he is bold, brash, and absolutely unforgiving with his subject matter. The piece that I'm standing in front of now is his first large-scale installation, which is called Rhyme. And rhyme consists of the two flatworks behind me and the sand pit in front of me. So the flatworks are unique because one of them is hand painted onto gold leaf, and the other one is a high resolution digital scan of the hand painted version. Now, I know which one is which, but I'm not going to tell you. So you'll have to come to the exhibition to figure out on your own which is which. But I will give you a hint. After he did the scan of the hand-painted original, he went back to the hand-painted work and added in more detail. So the more detailed of the two panels is the original hand-painted one. He's drawing inspiration here from a very surprising source, the Italian Renaissance. He is showing us this battle scene, but in this battle scene, we don't see any evidence of death or destruction. That is what the sand pit in front of me is for. This is a giant memento mori, or a reminder of the death that we will all eventually suffer. So here, Tenoya is showing us blood red sand with jet black rocks and skulls. This is where the reminder of death is that is so absent in the flat works. He is taking the traditional dry garden that you see in Zen gardens and completely and totally turning it on its head. So this exhibition is a little bit unique in the fact that most museums actively discourage people from taking photographs. But for this show, we are encouraging people to take photographs as long as you don't use a flash, because the flash will be damaging to the artwork. And we're actually encouraging all of you to post your pictures and video taken in this exhibition on social media. We've actually created a hashtag, hashtag unearthly delights. So you can tag all these photos and video that you're taking in the exhibition and match it up with some of the other videos and photos that other people are taking. For more information about the exhibition and about upcoming exhibition related programming, check our website at japansociety.org or the exhibition specific microsite at garden of unearthly delights exhibition.com. Hopefully, we'll see you here soon.